So we're going to do one more um, hyperbola drawing mechanism from, from this bit before we move on to parabolas. Um, and what I'm going to do is this one here um, from figure 209. So um, this has a, a number of features, but it's got a couple of um, tracks which are fixed. Um, so we've got two, two different lines which slide uh, in, in fixed tracks and one which rotates. So I'm going to do my rotating line here. Uh, let's just start that off with the angle theta. That's going to drive uh, the mechanism. Um, there's another fixed line coming through um, in this direction. And let me, uh, this one is fit through a slider, so its length is indeterminate, but we'll uh, locate the position of this, this slider sub length a and we'll give its angle uh, an angle uh, phi now there's um there's a slider at c and the um there's a fixed angle here um and that angle is is um the appropriate quantity to make this line uh, horizontal. Now the appropriate quantity, if you think about it, if that is phi, um, is going to be phi over 2 uh, plus phi. Uh, so that makes that um, horizontal. We can see if we tinker with phi um, that that's indeed true. Now, there's a second um, angled line that's going to come into play here and put another point uh, to fix where it's going to go through the axis. Uh, this time I'll make the, the line uh, indefinite length there. But I will specify where F is. Uh, and we will specify this angle. It's not necessarily related to phi, uh, so we'll let that be specified by psi. Now, there's a further line that goes through the intersection here. And again, it's going to be on sliders, so it's going to be an indeterminate length. Uh, make sure it goes passes through G. You see the intersecond constraint, and it's rigged in order that at this angle is ninety degrees. So with all that, uh, we can actually move our mechanism by theta and see what we could watch uh, what happens. The point which draws the curve is h. And so if we look at the locus as theta varies, um, that gives us our curve. Um, now, is that a hyperbola? <clears throat> we can check that uh, by looking at this equation in our symbolic panel here. Well, as you might expect, there are some sine of phi's and sine of psi's and cos of psi's, etc. But if you look at the x's and y's, if you consider these to be just constants, 
Um, you've got a y, you've got an xy, you've got an x squared, you've got an x. Uh, so this is indeed the equation of a conic, and it certainly looks like a hyperbola. So if we wanted a slightly um, nicer equation, uh, we could, uh, or a slightly simpler equation, we could um, choose specific values of uh, phi and psi, which might make things um, uh, a bit clearer. So if, let's say phi uh, was actually going to be uh, pi by 4. Um, to change it here as well. And let's say psi was going to be pi by 4. And if you look at the equation of K naught, uh, clearly the signs and causes of phi, uh, phi and psi are going to uh, simplify. Um, I'd have that equation there. Um, I can leave it to you um, to ask the question. I can ask you the question um, of what is what are the asymptotes of that? What's its axis of symmetry?